Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. Let me preface today's video by letting you know that I am not a true crime professional. I'm simply a true crime fan who finds cases online and I'm simply reacting to what has been put out there for the public. One of the points we discussed in my video was the fact that Micah had retained a lawyer for a divorce. To me and a lot of you as well, that just didn't make a lot of sense. If you are planning on carrying out on aliving yourself, putting down at least maybe a $5,000 dollar retainer for a divorce attorney just doesn't make a lot of sense. Ashley Black 5870 says not only did she file for divorce, she also filed to change her last name back. That doesn't sound like someone who's trying to commit schmooicide to me. Oh wow. A Wine said I agree. Why bother filing for divorce and handing over five thousand dollars to a divorce attorney that she was given by a friend? So allegedly she was given $5,000 from a friend to file for divorce? That's something we can look into. Maybe it was a gift, I don't know, but she, but if she was intending to pay it back, I doubt she'd want to leave that burden on someone else. Meaning, if a friend of Micah's did gift her this $5,000 in order to put a retainer down for a lawyer, to file for divorce and tended on paying her back, I don't think Mika would just like take $5,000 from her friend knowing that she's not going to give that back and then placing that financial burden on her friend. I can't speak on the character of um, Micah, but it seems like so many people love her and are obviously fighting for justice for her that that itself speaks volumes on her character. So I can't imagine, and again, just my own opinion, I don't think Micah's the type of person that would place that type of burden on her friend. So I believe that she had every intention of giving her friend the $5,000 back if it was the case that she lent it in the first place. I do want to continue the comment, but they go back into the pawn shop. She says, her watching over her shoulder at the pawn shop was super sus to me. Could have been worried about JP finding her mid-purchase since he, uh, we know he was tracking her. Also, there was at least one guy acting strange in the shop as well. I had up until just my last video not seen Micah at the gas station except for being outside pumping the gas. I've now seen the surveillance of her inside the gas station. She's just purchasing a drink. I have seen the footage of her being at the pawn shop. There's great videos here on YouTube breaking down the surveillance video of her in the pawn shop. And I believe what this commenter is alluding to is that when Micah was up at the counter for about the 20 minutes she was purchasing the weapon, there seemed to be another customer sort of browsing. If you're interested, I can definitely dive into that, but so many people have already put out such good deep dives into that video. I didn't think it was necessary, but I think it is an important detail if it's your first time hearing it, that yeah, there was somebody who may have looked a little suspicious at the pawn shop, maybe following Micah. Not JP necessarily himself, but possibly somebody he hired, somebody from the church, who knows? He goes on to say, similarly, I can't imagine her risking a parent with a child finding her in the park. See, I thought that too. Okay, uh, especially being that close to the dock. It's not like she gave great instructions about where she was to the police. I'm going to say it a thousand times, but the woman calls 911 saying, hey, I want my body to be found. And then allegedly hikes up at least two trails uh, that, 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 that were closed off to the public in knee-high water, and then I won't get over this. Until the story makes sense and we get more information, I won't get over it. I also touched on the surveillance of when Micah left her house first thing in the morning when she was getting ready to go to work. She seemed like she was dressed for work. She had her hair back in what seemed like a braid. We found out she worked at a bar a grill in a bar, so she would be dressed to serve, okay? She has black on, like her hair is pulled back. I wonder if there are pictures online of Jay Peters waitresses to see what their uniform is, because if it's all black, it would make sense that she was dressed to what looks like she'd be under the impression of going to work that day. Most of it is like all the food, but there is one photo of a gentleman at a bar, and it's from Yelp. And he's wearing a collared, a collared all black shirt. The attire matches. She's wearing her work uniform. 
I think. On the case, Jeannie says she also got dressed for work, packed a lunch, paid $5,000 to her lawyer two days prior, paid her registration and insurance on her car, brought, oh, sorry, excuse me, bought a $500 gun and borrowed a car. So, so the black car didn't even like belong to Micah? Like it wasn't, I think I would need clarification because they say and paid her registration and insurance on her car, but then she borrowed a car. I'm not sure why very well could have, but I'm not sure why she would bother paying all this money on to drive her own car, but then borrow somebody else's car. Maybe again, she's fearful of being tracked. So she, I'm sorry for the squeaking. They're doing construction all summer long. I'm trying to talk over them. I apologize. But maybe she was just trying to be uh, incognito and borrowed a car. That could be true. And filled up the tank. All things a woman who plans on living does. I want to keep talking about this, but that's going to be it for today's video because these construction trucks are creeping closer and closer and closer to my window and it's getting harder to talk over it. And this is such an important topic that I don't want to be screaming over construction. So, oh my gosh, I was just about to sit down and start editing today's video and I found something I have to include. We found, oh my gosh, I didn't find someone found Micah's work schedule this answers well it answers we're gonna have to deal with the vehicles because I need to talk about this I was I I've been questioning well when does she start it's got to be later in the evening because if uh, uh, J, J Peter's Bar and Grill opens at 11 until 9 so if she's scheduled for 11 or 12 we already know she's at the pawn shop around like 12 30 she's getting gas around 1 she's not found till 3 that would be like 4 hours after her shift began right and I figured if that was the case her phone would be being blown up where people would be where are you where are you texting her trying to fill in her shift at the very least, uh, doing a welfare check, especially uh, if this was something that she didn't do often, like not showing up for work or rep reporting not being in, being absent. They have the J. Peters schedule and you can see Mika's schedule and on 427, she is scheduled for 12 p.m. noon. So she's already running late for work. On the surveillance, don't we see her finicking with her phone? Like, is she just blocking numbers? Or did she did she text people? And if she texted people, where are these text messages? Is anybody that worked with her, her employer or coworker, say, yeah, it was weird. You know, she was supposed to be in for noon, so I texted her about like 12.15 and wonder where she was. Like, has anybody said that yet? <gasps> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. I need to throw that in there, we're done. I'll see you in my next one. <laughs>